In this vid, I'm going to be giving reviews of two movies that came out on Christmas Day. That would be Disney and Pixar Soul and then Warner Brothers and Wonder Woman 1984. These were two movies that were originally scheduled to come out of June of 2020, but then for obvious reasons they got pushed back to where eventually they had to settle for coming out on streaming services, where Soul went to Disney's Disney Plus, and then Wonder Woman 1984 went to Warner Brothers HBO Max. So yeah, they eventually came out, came out on streaming services on Christmas Day so everyone could enjoy them at home. Of the two, the first that I watched first was Soul. And Soul coming from Pixar, there's always great expectations, especially when it's an original Pixar project. And unlike the trailers for Onward, which were a little iffy to me and I didn't think it looked all that great, the trailers for Soul looked great right off the gate to where it looked like it was going to be that next great original Pixar project in line with stuff like Inside Out and Coco. And speaking of Inside Out, this movie is sort of the spiritual successor to Inside Out. Where that movie dealt with what goes on behind the scenes of someone's mind. This movie deals with what goes on behind the scenes of someone's soul when dealing with being in the zone, your purpose, and the afterlife. Which the message the message of the afterlife was seemed like at the beginning, really kind of dark for kids, where the movie starts off a movie about a, a guy dying and his soul trying desperately not going trying not to go to the great beyond. So that mes message right off the gate might be a little too dark for kids, and I was kinda like, wow, it's kind of weird that an animated movie is going in this direction. When it came to the story itself, the story is really just kind of weird. Uh, the trailers for this movie, speaking of Inside Out, it made the movie look like Inside Out again, where it's a movie about two souls uh, just going on this journey through like the, sort of this crazy mind realm and stuff like that to sort of get what they need. This movie, it sort of has that element going for it where you have two characters, the main character Joe and then this other soul named 22, these souls going in the sort of the afterlife kind of world or sort of the great beyond or something like that. But when it the more it went on, the more it actually sort of took this twist in the middle, which I'm not going to spoil, to where that was not in the trailers at all. And the movie story at that point just became really kind of weird and something I did not see coming. And initially when this sort of twist element came into play with Joe in 22, at the, that's when the movie kind of lost me just because I was like, it was really just sort of a bunch of hijinks and the movie just really wasn't as smart as it seemed like it was going to be at, at the beginning. Uh, but the more it went on, the more the, the movie actually had more to say when it came to actual souls and sort of someone's purpose to where it actually was kind of smart what they were doing. And it really kind of grew on me the more the movie went along. And I actually got better the more the movie got along to where it started off just kind of silly this new element but the more it went on the more it actually did have some sort of great commentary on stuff I wanted to say about the soul and the mind so that stuff was kind of cool but the big elephant in this movie and something I knew right off the bat from the trailers is that this movie is the first ever Pixar film with a black character as the lead and a whole bunch of black other characters in the movie as supporting roles now that's obviously something very appropriate for 2020 but it's kind of amazing that throughout Pixar's history, they've only really had one pro black character in any of their movies, and that's Frozone from the Incredible movies. And even then, even then, that character is not a lead in that fam in that in those movies. The, the family, the Incredibles, they're the, they're the leads, and he's more of a supporting character. So it's really kind of crazy it took this long to really have a black character or a movie, a Pixar film about black culture. But they do a really good job with it, with showing stuff like the barbershop, the music, even the animation style captures sort of that black genre and black culture really well along with great voice work from the cast so that stuff was great in that aspect how they really kind of captured black cult culture and that stuff is very appropriate for 2020 ultimately this movie took some time to really get going but ultimately i thought soul really did deliver on providing a mature animated film dealing with the soul purpose and other stuff you wouldn't find in, in animated films other than pixar it ended up ended up being a pretty damn deep message along with its ending where it's ending it was going places that i did not think it was gonna do so ultimately soul really did deliver on what you would expect from a pixar film so i would give it an 8.5 out of 10 took a little bit to really get going but once it get going it gave me that stuff that i was really looking forward to from those trailers and gave me the stuff you'd want to see from a pixar film in line with those original stuff like inside out coco or up this is sort of right in line with those so yeah this was a, a another really really good pixar movie for me Next up is Wonder Woman 1984. Now the original Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman movie from 2017 was really a movie that sort of saved DC's reputation or the DCEU because they were coming off the one, two double punch dud of Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice and then Suicide Squad. Those two movies were really sort of critical duds and they really sort of killed DC's movie rep reputation. But then Wonder Woman came along the year after 
It was a great movie. It was a, crit a critical hit. It was a financial hit. Everyone really liked the movie. And it really sort of saved DC's reputation when it came to their cinematic universe. Now, like the original, this sequel, Wonder Woman 1984, doesn't take place in modern times. The first movie take pl took place during World War One. This movie takes place during uh, 1984, obviously, and deals with Wonder Woman on another adventure, dealing with two new villains, Cheetah, played by Kristen Wiig, and then Max Lord, played by Pedro Pascal, which this movie coming off the heels of just watching the Mandalorian is really sort of an interesting watch when watching how he was or how he looked in that one compared to this one. He looks almost rec unrecognizable when you see his face in this one. When it came to this movie, Wonder Woman 1984, there was some stuff I liked. I liked the difference in Diana that we saw because obviously this movie takes place several decades after Wonder Woman, the original Wonder Woman, so she's not obviously nowhere near as naive as she was in that first movie. So I like the difference we saw in her. I thought her and Trevor still had pretty good chemistry. The way they included Trevor made sense. I guess I, I didn't know how it was going to be based on the trailers and stuff like that, but seeing how it was in the movie, his arc, why he's in the movie made sense because I was really curious why the hell he was going to be in the movie. I liked Cheetah's arc. It was kind of interesting. The way it started off and how it finished did make sense, and I liked how Kristen Wiig played her. And the action overall was pretty good. There's some pretty good action sequences, one that takes place on Themyscira. There's another one that's sort of like a highway chase. There's a mall one, and then the final battle, I thought, was overall kind of solid so yeah the action for the most part was pretty solid but this movie people saying that it's suffering that it suffers from sequel overload while that is true in some aspects i think the main problem with this movie is that it's just really sloppy story-wise or really just kind of uninteresting the villain plot involved involving max lord while i thought pedro pascal did a solid job, solid job portraying him the plot involving that character is just really dumb and just never pulled me in as it should have the more it went along i was just trying to get into it but it's just one of those stories that's just like uh you really should have thought thought, thought this story more through and because the way it goes on it just did not suck me in at all and the bad thing about that is that it's a stupid story and what's bad about that is that the movie not including cre including the credits is about two hours and 25 minutes long what <laughs> that's longer than the first three avengers movies were you know a standalone wonder woman movie wherever the, whether it's the original or a sequel does not need to be anywhere near that long that's a problem that the first movie had that even though it was great it maybe was about 15 minutes too long to where that final battle with Ares dragged on longer than it should. This one, you fell the length by the end to where when I looked and I saw that was two hours and 25 minutes, I was just like, there was no excuse. That, that movie did not have to be anywhere near that long. They could have cut off probably a good like 15 or 20 minutes. And it just would have felt a lot better and it wouldn't have dragged on as long as it should have. And then another issue that I had is that the 80s aspect didn't really play into the movie as well as sort of you would think it would when the time, when the year is in the movie, Wonder Woman 1984. The 80s aspect, there's a little bit of an 80s montage at the beginning. But other than that, you can watch this movie and you couldn't tell that it takes place in the 80s at all. There's just not a whole lot there to really suggest it's an 80s movie. And I thought they, would, they would, would have been just better off setting the movie in modern times so they could really sort of progress the story of Wonder Woman, give her further character development. Because ultimately, by the time this movie's done, you know the fact that, well, it's not like we've seen her character sort of progress because this takes place in 1984. And obviously, she's got other chronological appearances after this movie with Batman vs. Superman and then Justice League. So I really think they should have set this movie in modern time. And that's, I think that's why the actress Gal Gadot said that the next movie needs to be set during modern time so they can really sort of progress the story of wonder woman because i really if there's whenever the next sequel comes out it better not be sort of another quote-unquote period piece taking place in the 90s or stuff like that set it in modern times so they can really sort of progress her character diana further ultimately sadly this movie wonder woman 1984 it had its moments but it didn't quite do it for me like i said the story was kind of sloppy i didn't think they played up on the 80s aspect as well as they should have and it was just way too goddamn long two hours and 25 minutes should not be what's needed for a wonder woman movie like i said the first three avengers movies were about two hours and 15 minutes so yeah this movie did not need to be anywhere near that long so i would give this movie a six out of ten it's not bad it has its moments like i said i, I like the difference in diana the action is pretty good her and trevor have had some pretty good chemistry i even like cheetah minus the cgi cat lady at the end but yeah ultimately it's a movie that didn't have quite wasn't quite there for me and then just like yeah compared to that first movie it's nowhere near as good and plus this movie also it introduced gave sort of wonder woman a new power 
to where it's sort of like it contradicts what we've seen in her next chronological appearances in the other DC movies to where it's all like, why did they not think this through more? Why did they give her this power? Just because it's inconsistent with what we've seen, what we see in the next movies, her next chronological appearances after this movie. So yeah, this movie it kind of missed the mark on several key aspects for me, which made it nowhere near as good as the original. So that'll do it for these reviews. You got Pixar Soul and then Warner Brothers Wonder Woman 1984. Ultimately, while I would have loved to have seen both these movies in the theaters, I'm glad that they still came out in 2020. It gave me something to watch on Christmas Day because most of the basketball games were absolute duds. So it was fun to watch these movies. Uh, if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching.